frustration turn into elation as you turn your head to self-isolation decoration Hello there, Phil here from Paint the Town Green, giving you some decorating tips to help you with your self-isolation decoration. Today I'm going to show you how to paint or prime and paint shelves. So we've already prepared them, if you're coming in, I'm going to show you what we're going to need. I've laid it all out on the bench here. We are going to need a paintbrush. There's the paintbrush, just got the cover on. There we are. Um, you can use a one inch, I think this is inch and a half, um, or is it two inch? Maybe two inch. Um, you need a paintbrush. I've gone for a small little mini roller through these shelves. I'm just going to use that one, but the dog's got to it, so that's no good. Uh, a mixing stick, a paint kettle. Now, ideally, you would use a roller tray, a mini one, to go with your mini roller. I can't find one, and obviously can't get to the shops. So what I have managed to find is a Tupperware box. I haven't told my wife yet. Uh, so we're going to use that instead, and we'll wash it up, and she'll never know. Um, primer. So I've managed to find this product in the shed. But there's not quite enough of that to do all these shelves. So I've also found this. Now this is another primer uh, that we'd obviously tinted down. We dropped some pigment into it. You can tell by this grey colour here because we would have been priming something that's going to go super dark. We're not going super dark here. But what I'm actually going to do is mix these two together um, to make us a lighter primer. And in the same time, make sure I've got enough to use. Now, usually, ideally, for painting these shelves, I'd use an eggshell finish. That is what I would normally do but I don't have any. But what I have found is a tin of wipe with emulsion in the correct colour. What's the colour for in here? Grey seal. Correct. Grey seal. So it's the same colour that we did the outside of my daughter's room and she wants the inside done this colour. So what I'm going to do, I've managed to find some wipe with emulsion, so I'm going to paint the shelves with wipe with emulsion. It's okay. I know you're not strictly supposed to. It's meant to be eggshell because it's more durable, but I'm going to use wipe with emulsion because that's all I've got. And as luck would have it, I've also found some decorator's varnish. So what I'm going to do when I finish painting this is I'm going to put decorator's varnish on the areas that are going to likely get scraped, i.e. the surfaces of the shelves. Um, so I reckon I've managed to cobble together enough product and equipment to be able to make this work. Let's give it a go. Okay, that's our edges done. Now we go in with a roller to do the flat surfaces. I'm going to pour some into my Tupperware box. Okay, so that's the first bit of the shelf, that top bit there done. If you notice, I'm not rolling it so much that I start taking the paint off. But I'm doing it enough that there's no build-ups, no lines from the edge of the roller. It's gone out nice and smooth and nice and evenly covered. I'm now going to repeat the process all the way down here. Notice, starting at the top. Starting at the top and working my way down. So I can put the bucket down here and I'm not damaging or uh, smudging any paint I've done. If you start at the bottom and work up, you'll have an absolute nightmare. So always, whatever you're doing with painting generally, try and work with gravity. Start at the highest point and work your way down. You'll find you have a much easier day. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. okay, so we've finished priming our shelves and you're looking at them from a slightly strange angle. Why is that? Because we're actually lying on the floor. Why are we lying on the floor? We're lying on the floor because at some point, whenever you're painting anything, it's a good idea to lie on the floor and if you're painting a bathroom, to sit on the loo and see what you can see. Because I thought I'd filled all the holes, but if you look up here, there's screw holes that haven't been filled. Right. On. One more thing that I've done, top tip. I've asked my camera person to time how long it took me to do this. How long did it take? 58 minutes. It took me 58 minutes. Why is that good to know? It's really useful to know because I now know it takes me 58 minutes to put a coat of paint on these shelves. Working. So I always time how long the first coat takes because then that helps me break down the work going forward and I know exactly how much time I need to allow in between whatever I'm doing, cooking meals, doing other bits and pieces around the house. Um, so there we are. I'm going to just put the coats on, do those second fills and the corking we've talked about and then we'll show you the finished product. One more thing I wanted to show you, uh, and I said I'd, uh, I'd be back when I finished putting all the coats on, but I promised you that I'd show you how to put the paint on with a brush. So we put our primer on with a brush and a roller, because it didn't really matter 
um, what the finished surface was like and rubbing down between each coat. I'm now in my second coat to the top coat, so I'm going to show you how to apply the paint with a brush. Um, we'll often give clients the option if we're painting uh, uh, MDF drawings, they want to roll a finish or a brush finish. The secret with a brush finish is you just need to keep moving, you need to keep at what we call a wet edge um, so the paint doesn't start dragging. Um, so I'm going to paint this top bit, which is one of the more challenging things to do because it's a big open area and I want to do it with a brush whilst keeping a wet edge. So let me show you how you would eggshell, although we're not actually using eggshell, but if we were using eggshell, uh, an MDS surface using a brush. So we start on our edge and we'll keep our brush moving nice and quickly. Get the paint on in one direction. Now, if you feel it's a bit too built up in some areas and you think, oh, this isn't going on very smoothly, you can do, I think some people call this cross hatching. So something I sometimes do is you go at 90 degrees, not pressing quite so hard, quick movements like that, and then back the way that you went. And that disperses the paint a bit more evenly. And then you go back the original way, again, getting lighter with your pressure all the time. Keep you moving, so we're gonna keep our wet edge. So I'm gonna continue moving. Now, if at this point, the phone rings or whatever, ignore it. Because as soon as you stop, the paint starts drying and it starts to go sticky and you can't work with it anymore. If you're struggling to cover an area and your paint's going off more quickly than you can catch up, a little trick is just put a little nip of water in it, particularly if you're doing your final coat. Put a little nip of water in your eggshell, just loosen it up a bit and give you a sort of little bit more time. So Okay, so I'm all done. I've done my primer, I've done my two coats of paint. I mean, that all dries back, it should look uniform. It's a bit blotchy at the moment because if the paint dries out, you get different uh, levels of, of thickness of paint, so it can look blotchy, so don't panic. Best thing to do is walk away, come back when it's all done, and check it over when it's dry. So that's me done with this. I'm going to show you next time about painting the skirting and also about putting varnish on the areas that are getting lots of traffic. So I'll see you then.